It's interesting, right? Watching Mario be the technical guy. This, this guy can't even open a can of soup. <laughs> Hashtag Sports is proud to partner with Mr. Rogers Homes. Sean Rogers is a proud Western New Yorker and is now your Arizona relocation specialist. You can see his reviews as a top 1% agent on Zillow, Homes, and Trulia.com. Go ahead and download his free Arizona relocation guide found in the description of this video. Subscribe to his YouTube channel and, as Sean would say, God bless America and go Bill. All right, ladies and gentlemen of Hashtag Nation, due to our prolonged absence that we did have, we decided to mix things up and have a... Uh, fun time today. We actually have a very special guest. You've seen him on the show. This is Captain Minus himself, Mike Granada, the uh, former Division One defensive head coach. Um, yeah, we were gone so long we had to walk to Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> the studio is actually in the shop. I, actually, the studio <laughs> has to get fixed as well. You know, so we are going to be uh, exploring a couple different topics today. Number one. Quarterbacks within the AFC East and how they all compare to one another. We're going to obviously start with uh, – no, we got to clean matter. up with Allen. we got to clean up matter. with Allen. It doesn't matter. So let's, uh, let's go to New England. It's always good to beat up on them first. <laughs> Mac Jones. Mac Jones. New England boy. What's that now? <laughs> <laughs> I just remember – the, the years of listening to you talk about how New England was just going to pistol with the Bills, no matter what Bills team it was, <laughs> no matter what, you're like, it's New England, dude. Good coach, Brady. Man. Good coach. Brady. Wow, I hate Brady, but good coach. Great coach. Hate so, him. hate him too. Yeah, but <laughs> so do you think he got it right with Mac Jones? Yeah. Is this right, like, 100%. right, like next 10 years right? Or is this a, given the circumstances... He got it right enough. This is, uh, I could be better than Tom Brady, right? Whoa. There's never been a better fit mm -hmm. ever, like in the history of the game, than Mac Jones in New England. Okay, why? Why do you say that? Did you see him win a game last year? <laughs> what did he throw, like a half a pass? <laughs> Mr. Bills? Honestly, he fits that system. He's a smart quarterback, a good enough arm. There was a guy that played in New England maybe three, four years ago that fits that mold. And he's, in, you know, he's he's probably smarter than Brady, so. I mean, is this is this just a? Uh, a it's not a Bama thing, man. This guy's a smart product of the Bama. I thought it was well, well, because we've seen a lot of Bama court. This is the Paul and I. We talk about this all the time. There's been a lot of Bama quarterbacks that have come out, and you know, probably because he had Brady, he hasn't had to go. But you think Saban and him had a conversation about Mac Jones? Yeah. I mean, like, listen, this guy could be your next guy. That you have to go. Have we seen his ceiling yet? Is this is this as good as Mac Jones is going to be, or is this as good as Mac Jones has to be? I think well, that's sort. Of, I think that's sort. That's of the, a great that's, question too. That's, that's sort of the, the conversation, right? Like he Paul doesn't have to throw for three hundred. Paul, he, he doesn't have to be. When did Brady have to be great? Let me ask you something seriously. In his six Super Bowls, there, what was he good in? Like one of them, <laughs> where you know, where they Mario had, knows the Atlanta happened. game where he had to come back and where you know. Uh, Shanahan doesn't know how to run a football. No, he doesn't. No. You know what I mean? You run three. You run three. You run the ball three times there. You kick a field goal with one of the most accurate field goal kickers in history. Brady doesn't get his ring there, mm -hmm. but yeah. he did throw for what, like eight hundred yards that game in the comeback. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah how many of them in the air? But, <laughs> exactly. That's, but that's the thing. When, when does? But when does Mac Jones seriously win? He's going to have a strong defense every year. Going to be top ten. Hand the ball off, dude. You know, I think the ball... <laughs> hit, your, hit your short routes. What's yeah, I th jo Jacoby Myers is a really underrated yes. receiver, right? He's really underrated. Now that they added Devontae Parker there, Mac Jones could be somebody to pay. They're back. huge. You yeah, see their wide receivers they're across the line? line. I mean, they got that hybrid tight end, Nikhil Harry, still. I don't know how long he's going to last there. But they got the, they have some huge wide, wide receivers there for him to pick apart. And then they, you still have Henry and um, uh, Johnny Smith. So mm -hmm. the, you don't have to be great. You got to be smart, and he's smart. He fits the mold. He's got a good enough arm. He's he's mobile enough to what they're doing. Yeah. And again, did I mention top ten defense every year? <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> don't turn I, the ball. I over. think people kind of write the Patriots off because they look like a tire fire, right? Well, yeah. they're not nearly as bad as the Jets. The Jets are a complete mess. Even though they nailed the draft, I think this. Oh yeah. This 100%. year they nailed the draft. You're definitely not a Jets fan. But Garrett Wilson yeah, is a confusing pick to me, right? The Garrett Wilson pick was confusing to me. Because, you know, you look at that wide receiver group, you say, 
do you need another small wide receiver? Like, do you need another? Well, they lost Crowder. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> since, Thank you for since that. Keyshawn Johnson, okay, which was what in the nineties, mid nineties. Mm-hmm. Every draft pick confuses me as a draft pick. I'm just saying. I think you know. That was kind of the last bona fide number one pick that they had where he's like, okay, you're taking the tallest wide receiver in the draft that can play, play 10 years in the league or whatever. Yeah. It's decent. Ran a 4 9. It doesn't matter. You can catch. <laughs> you throw him the damn ball. <laughs> you know, you know, Michael Crabtree 40 time. Crabtree, like, is it? You remember that count he's like, I ain't running the 40. No. Uh, no, no, no. 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 Ain't running it. No. You know I can catch. That's a million dollar 40, man. Yeah. You just sit yeah. down. Yeah. Sit your ass down. Mm-hmm. That's right. But, okay, so if we go over to the Jets, I mean, yeah. I love what uh, Soleil has been doing there as far as building that defense up. Yeah, that's, he's doing it very similar to what McDermott did was he built, he worked on his defense first, mm-hmm. and then he's going to let the offense fe- eventually figure it out. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but, uh, I mean, getting Hall there, getting Wilson, uh, you got Becht in there. They, they also got another uh, stud lineman um, in there as well. I can't remember his name, but. They're starting to build the pieces around there. Like, what? What? Is, what about the Jets? Are you like, you're still off about quarterback? Quarterback. You think it is? It's yeah. Like, you know awful, what? Because it's interesting to me, right? Yeah. Because you take a look at a quarterback that they feel to be mobile, right? They feel is a mobile quarterback, and mm-hmm. what do you do with really mobile quarterbacks? You don't get them really big wide receivers. So it's the exact opposite of what we see in New England. New England has these big, gigantic wide receivers. Yes. But the, you know, you take a look at Baltimore, what does Baltimore do? Baltimore gets those thin frame wide receivers because they need guys that can create separation just by speed eventually. She knows. Exactly. They have a quarterback that are going to run around and kind of figure it out and just try and make something happen. That's but cool. Buffalo didn't do anything different. Buffalo did the exact same thing when Allen first got here. Look at mm-hmm. your wide receiver group. You had Beasley and John Brown. You had Robert Foster. Robert Foster <laughs> was the tallest guy in the group. You know, like, nobody knew that. Everyone thought he was shorter. Yeah, that's right. Well, he's a speedster. I think yeah, he was short. Bill should have won the Super Bowl last year. I'm gonna be honest with you. They should have won. The Super Why do you think they're playing St. Louis or St. Louis? Jesus, LA. This, yeah. I mean, honestly, it was. I get to not flash. It was San Diego to me. I don't have a quarter. I mean, anyone have a quarter? That's what that came down to. Yeah. yeah. Have a you know what I'm saying? Heads or tails? Yeah. That goes the other way. And you're talking about the. Well, Bills. I think the NFL yeah. acknowledges that by the fact that the very first game, the season opener for the NFL, is Buffalo against the Rams. And again, you know, that's their acknowledgement of. We yeah, know. This is, this is the game that should have happened. Moral victories aren't something Buffalo needs. I agree. You know what I'm saying? We need a Super Bowl. I agree. But honestly, you want to make it right? Put the college rules in place. Put the college rules in place. I don't mind the 25-yard line thing. I want to see scores 110 to 109 in seven overtimes. I want everybody wants to see that, right? This is an NBA to college basketball where the shot clock's longer and the game's eight minutes long though. Yeah, you you're know, telling me in the twenty five yard line people aren't gonna be scoring. That's true. You know what I, I mean? think I think it no, it, it, the, the way I like it if you did one possession a piece, if both teams kicked a field goal, then there's no more field goals. You get the ball to your your own forty Let's do and, it. You, and you gotta score. Let's That's do it. Right. Yeah, Let's I like do it. That. I like that. Not the twenty five. Oh, and then you start going for two. There's no yeah, there's no more field goals. Right? Yeah. There's no That's more field goals. But then it's on it's on you. There's no luck. Right. There's no exactly. luck anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? I like that. I mean, I don't think those rules would ever help the Jets, to be honest with you. No, 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 but it would help the it would help the game. Oh, sure. It would help the game. You're not relying on like I said, the Bills they had a great team last year. They should have won the Super Bowl. Well, that entire team is back. Yeah. They, <laughs> they would have beat the Rams. In in my mind, no question. They would really? Have. No question. No. I think no Donald would have had a few. They would have scared the crap. Out of Matt Stafford. And I, I don't like Matt Stafford, but they would have scared the crap out of Aaron Donald against that interior defense. Or interior that interior offensive line. Not, I don't know. Aaron Donald is a Hall of Fame interior lineman, maybe the best that's ever played. And Josh Allen would have picked him up and threw him down. <laughs> He's a strong, strong. Those are two different. You're, talk, you're not even talking. You're talking human. And I don't even know what Josh Allen is, but it's, <laughs> it's up there. He's amazing. <laughs> it's like Thanos versus Thor. Oh, oh, yeah. Excuse um, me. Sorry, so there's one more, uh, obviously, one more team in the 305 that we have to discuss, and their quarterback. Roll which tied. No one has told them that he's still right roll tied. Yeah, roll yeah tied. it's like Alabama versus everybody else yeah, in this division. Pretty much. Uh, so Tua, let's talk. Let's talk about Tua down in uh, in Miami. Do you think that he's gonna? Because honestly, coming into the season, barring the quarterbacks, 
I think that the AFC East could have three 10 win teams. I think they can. They get three teams. Miami on paper team. looks scary, but there's they some do. definitive things that you could just tell in their roster building that they know that this that they're they're not really that close. They're look at their man. They're dysfunctional. Look at their running yeah. back room. Their running back room has three guys who were running back one last year, right? Yeah. But and they, one of them is Tyreek. <laughs> <laughs> You're but telling they, me McDaniel's not going to turn him into the next Debo Samuel? Oh, I get it, right? I get it, but, but you can just tell that they just don't know what direction to go. They're no. trying to build their team to make a change of quarterback, to absorb a change of quarterback. They have to be. I think they think they made a mistake. Well, how many coaches ago was that? Right? You know, like, you know, look, look, I think they think they made a mistake, but I don't know if they made one. Honestly, I don't know if they made one. You like Tua, don't you? I do. I like Tua, but, I, but he hasn't panned out yet. No. But again, no, in, 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 in today's NFL, you got to pan out yesterday. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like when they draft you, you have to be, okay, yeah. What, what, why aren't you doing this stuff? Well, the NFL is a little faster. Even than, even than the SEC. It's well, a little that, bit faster. But that's what I mean. You know, like I understand Tua survived in the SEC, but the fact of the matter is they just have better athletes and they always will have better athletes than the other team. Alabama. That's just the way they're They do, but, but I look at it from another perspective. When he's throwing passes to these guys, you know, he's not throwing balls behind people. No. You know, he's hitting guys in stride 55 yards. Yeah. Like, do that in the NFL, man. Right. But dude, Put it it's, up. It, the ball's coming at 15 miles an hour. These corners, their recognition is just so much better. That's mm-hmm. why Tua is struggling in the NFL because the velocity just isn't. It's like, no, I'm going to make a comparison. It's really easy. This is a this is a layup comparison. Chad Pennington survived in the NFL because he realized he couldn't throw the ball past 12 yards. That's just a fact. Not a great arm. And after that's his, what I mean. After his rotator cuff. And, and, but, the, but the corners Stayed in the league are so much faster that when Tua well, throws the ball, these guys get a better jump on Tua because the ball's not humming. Well, that's why you see Allen. Like, Allen throws a ball that's off target. It's coming at 65 miles an yeah. hour. That corner's not getting, it's oh, not yeah. getting a break well, on that. Peter Connors. I, but the thing with I Pennington, disagree a little bit, and here's why I disagree, Paul, is because in the NFL, if you have that much room, you're open. Yeah. Right, yeah. and in the co- college, you know, and, and a lot of quarterbacks that are coming out, they fail to realize this. They're in, they're in mini camp, right? And the coach is like, "Why didn't you throw that?" I was waiting for him to come open. It's not the same college. Yeah, no, that's open. That's right. You know, throw it there. Yeah, okay. that's right. So he doesn't, he hasn't realized how to throw people open yet. Leave for. Well, that's the thing with that. So, I want to say with you're in the league. Kind of, yeah, but he's he's in a, he's in an Alex uh, Smith type of situation though. You know, how many, you know those changeovers there. Yeah. Who am I listening to? I got a, you know, I got a racist front office. Flores is selling lawsuits. Yeah. What's going well, on here? Well, how many offensive coordinators did Alex Smith have in his first decade? Wait, like maybe? six. Yeah, he had, he had like six, six in, in nine time. years or something. Like yeah. That, something and, and here's the difference: Alex Smith is a genius. Yeah, he's a genius. Yeah, Alex right? Smith is smart dude. Two is not. He went to Bama first of all. I mean, let's let's. They're not the. Uh, you know, it's not Ivy League. Okay. <laughs> uh, and two is bright kid, but he's not Alex Smith. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's well, the thing. That, that's why I say what's the biggest difference between him and Pennington. Pennington could process everything, so he knew when he had to start his windup. Right. Right after he got the ball. Yeah. Uh, Tua hasn't been to that point yet. I don't think he's, he's his process. If you want to talk about throughout the AFC East, I think the process. I think I think Allen and, and Jones are probably one and two, and then you got Wilson and Tua bringing up the back end as far as how they're able to process what they're seeing. Can we just for a moment let's take our caps off, boys? Let's just have a moment of silence for a man. Who processed great, but thought he had a great arm, and Ryan Fitzpatrick finally retiring from the NFL. Let's have a moment of silence. Respect. Yeah. Go, Ryan. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Ryan. But, One of the you know, greatest screams in Buffalo history. <laughs> but, you know, the, I think that's the difference, right? Fitzpatrick was just convinced that he had a strong enough arm to do things that he should not have been doing. Yeah. That was always his downfall. He saw the field great, understood the game at a high, high, high Jeez. level. Which is why he played first, like, 26 teams. Yeah, yeah, he was, yeah, he was a genius. Yeah, you, you could, yeah, you, you gave him the answers to the test, and you blitzed him, and yeah. everyone thought they could blitz him because hey, he's the backup. Yeah, it's Fitzpatrick. Who cares? Yeah. He's like, <laughs> okay, I got you. One of these days, it's going to be revealed that he evaded so many concussions because of the fact that he had this bushy, cushion? yeah, he had this bushy cushion here. He had, That's how he had a doo-doo arm, though, man. He had a doo-doo <laughs> arm. Oh my god, I remember, man, when he was a freshman at Harvard. I'm like, oh my god, it's a quarterback. <laughs> 
Jeez, it looks like a scorpion out there. <laughs> but you were you saw a field bubble. I did. I'm yeah. throwing kickoffs past his like <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so if we're, if we've laid this all out. We've talked about the quarterbacks in the AFC East. If we had to if you had to rank them now, if we're ranking them going into the twenty twenty two season. And let's let's say this. Obviously, I think we all have a consensus here where the, we think the best quarterback in the AFC East is Allen. Okay, yeah. Allen. Now, who do you think has the most room for improvement of the three left? Given the surrounding cast, everything that's going on, who do you think is, is, is by the end of 2022, will be the most improved quarterback in, in the uh, AFC East? Tua. Cool. Two will be the most improved. Make the, yeah, play, the yeah. Daniels there, the, the talent level. Is that, that because offense. you guys put Jones a little bit high, so higher, so much higher that he doesn't have much to go? I don't think talking about yeah, the ceiling. Yeah, yeah. 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 exactly. I think I I don't think he's going to get the opportunity to shine the way that a player like Tua would. Right? No, like it's, Miami's going to have to depend on Tua this year. Mac Jones just has to not turn the ball over. Matt's right? going to throw for 250, 275 yards a game. And if he turns the ball over ten times or less, which I think he will, no one will have ten wins. It's you know it's funny you bring that up, right? Right when right before the playoff game, we did a I did a stat on the show, and I don't remember the exact stat, but I think it was that the, you know New England was like ten and two in games that Mac Jones threw for less than two hundred and twenty five yards. It was, like, it was like some absurd stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like there was like a line one in the loss. sand. He had one loss. Yeah. That, I remember he, was, loss, yeah. Yeah, he had one loss when he threw for under 250. When he threw for over 250, it was like he was like it was three like, and six or yeah, something, it was something like that. Like well, that. it's yeah. not absurd when you think in, in, in the histor- history of the NFL, quarterbacks that hand the ball off all game win. Yeah. Because you're chewing the clock. You're controlling yeah, right. the game. That's right. You know, but if you got to throw the ball, and it's changed a little bit now in today's NFL, but. You know, if you got to tr- if you got to, if Matt Jones has to throw the ball forty five times, there you're, probably, you're probably not winning. Man, we said the same thing about Josh Allen three off seasons ago. <laughs> I remember cutting that episode like, oh man, Josh Allen throws forty five times a game, you're you're gonna win four football games. I, when he do that first game that season, that. no, I didn't. I, I wasn't gonna, <laughs> that was me. So, like I was saying, I will end this episode with a stat from quarterbacks. Tom Brady has won more playoff games throwing three interceptions than Aaron Rodgers has won throwing three touchdowns. Just to, to, about the right surrounding that pass. Fantastic. <laughs> if that doesn't tell you, Brady lovers. I hate that guy <laughs> so much.